With your help, we can continue to fight for freedom. This is not possible without your generosity. Join our quest for the truth and our freedom. Simply visit www.realitycheck.radio forward slash donate to make a difference today. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week, we'll find out what they think about the special rooms at Auckland University that seem to be based on race. My producer has them all lined up and ready to go. Let's go now to Cam's Buddies. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Lindley. Hello, Cam. Are you refreshed and raring to go? Of course. I had a very pleasant Easter. I went to Waiheke uh, for the weekend and uh, had, a, had a wonderful time over there. Uh, swimming even, so, you know, the, the, the media and, uh, and the you know, various weather forecasters told us it was going to be freezing cold and uh, there'd be rain and uh, I was swimming every day at only Tangy Beach. Well, that might be the next theme, mightn't it? Uh, global <laughs> freezing. Global freezing, yeah. Hey, this week's topic, <laughs> I thought we'd touch on the a bit of a kerfuffle at Auckland University. You've put some signs up and said these areas are for Maori and Pacifica students only. And uh, I want to know what you think about that. Um, well, I don't think very much of it, to be honest. And um, may, maybe we'd better warn um, listeners that um, they might need to hang on to their knickers from my opinion. <laughs> um, now, the spaces concerned were Maori and Pacifica, but also Rainbow and Women. Mm. That's their spaces. Now, I just want to tell Willie Jackson, woman is pronounced woman for singular and women for plural. Just saying. No, that's absolutely uh, correct. And it used to grind my mother's gears, that's for sure. She used to sit there and shout at the TV going, it's women, it's women. (laughs) It really annoys me because you don't know whether they're talking about one or many until several sentences later you can work it out, you know. A bit like a quiz. Anyway, he should know better. Um, Anyway, um, the kerfuffle is said to be around Winston, who says it's these seeds of racial segregation that led to the KKK and apartheid way of thinking where we're divided by race. This space does exactly that, in my opinion. It's labelled as such by signage. It indicates that the likes of myself couldn't go in there. Well, what did David funny? Seymour... Well, he... Sorry, carry on. Yep, Sorry, David it's Seymour. all right. Uh, David Seymour campaigned against racial division, and he's simply standing by that, and I think that's good. Um, so, you know, there's no surprises there for people. Christopher Luxon's on the same page, and I think that's great to see the coalition actually standing united. I mean, something has to be united, doesn't it? Well, absolutely, but it's like these government organisations and universities haven't actually got the memo that we, we voted against this sort of nonsense uh, when we voted at last election. And um, I've always thought it might be a bit funny if I put on, say, a hidden camera and then tried to go into these spaces for Maori and Pacifica. And uh, someone might say, well, what are you doing in here? And I'll say, well, I'm Fijian. I, I was born in Fiji. It's Pacifica. Um, what are you going to do about it? And then we'll find what that what the real situation is, is you're not brown enough or something like that. Well, of course, they wouldn't be able to do a thing, in fact. And, of course, ultimately, it'll end up that most people will be like that. You won't be able to recognise whether they're Maori or Pacifica or, or European. Yeah. So I don't, exactly. I don't know where this ends, but, but this n- ideology nonsense, it has no end. It just morphs on and on and on to the ridiculous, and I think it's got to that point now. Now, a law student said from Auckland University that these spaces, quote, are vital for well-being and to counter the discrimination that they face daily. And it was also said, it was also said there's lots of important information in these safe spaces, amongst other things, free condoms, sanitary products. Now, Cam, are these for men or women? I'm just a little bit confused. And also, they... (laughs) <laughs> also, they have networks in there for harassment and anti-bullying. Now, this takes me a touch away from the 
racist angle of the topic, but it's my main point. Every bully has to find a victim. And the mentality of needing safe spaces in the first place creates victims. Bullies will then rule. As far as I'm concerned, they should barricade all safe spaces, put handrails in the corridors so these sad souls can learn to show some guts and hold themselves upright to face the world. And Parliament, if it's got the same safe spaces, it needs to do the same. Um, I think it's really damaging to people to let them think they are a victim and never let them learn to stand up. Yeah, I mean, and that, that, I that's the thing, isn't it, Lindley? The, the, it's so condescending and patronising for for the university and indeed government organisations to say Maori and Pacifica are too stupid to uh, attend university like everybody else, so what we're going to do is we're going to let them in and now we're also going to provide them with some safe spaces so they can study um, quietly or, or, or whatever um, because they're special. They're, they're the special kids of the university. And I think it's patronising to treat everybody like that and I think it's condescending to think that Pacifica and Maori students who get there on merit uh, are not as capable as everybody else, and so they need a crutch or a support to be able to participate well, in university. That, that is correct, and I think the only special thing that they create is it makes them special victims. Um, mm. And New Zealand is absolutely awash with it now. I mean, I come from a time when, uh, you know, we lived the opposite, and I must say I was never bullied at school. Um, I was teased for being tall and thin, um, or what they thought was thin, 60 kilos is not really thin, um, but you know, I learnt to stand up and nobody ever bullied me, and no. I think they knew they'd get a thick ear if they did, um, so I never had to do anything because I never, never got bullied, but if you teach people they're a victim, they will cower and the bullies will just gravitate them to them straight away, that's my opinion. Well, when I was and brought up, I think... when I was brought up, you, you, I was taught that bullies just need a smack in the head, and um, the they best do. way the best way to sort out a bully is to, is to give them the bash. And somehow, somewhere but, along the line, we've decided that oh no, we've just got to placate the bullies, and um, that's never worked. It never worked for Neville Chamberlain when when he went up against Adolf Hitler. Uh, you know, he said peace in our time and all that sort of nonsense because they never stood up to the bully, and it was only once the war started, that the bully was smacked around. And that's what it is in school. You know, it's the same thing with all of these people on social media saying mean things to people. It's like they've never been punched in the face. Um, if they had have been, no, they, well, might, they, probably, they might have stopped doing those sorts of things. Yeah, they probably haven't been punched in the face. But um, to be fair, um, I've never been punched in the face either because I think there's something in your... I don't know whether it's your aura or what it is, but people know if you're a victim. People know if you're going to stand up for yourself. Oh, absolutely. That's absolutely. Been, people, yeah, that's been... They can see it. They can see the weakness, and then they focus in on that weakness because real, reality is as human beings are just animals, right? And uh, we know that in absolutely. the animal kingdom, the weak are the ones that are culled from the herd by the strong, mm. uh, d you know, dependable lions or tigers or whatever uh, predator animal is out there, well, criminals and, and um, bullies are predators, and so they look for weakness. They never bully someone who's they strong. They never bully someone who's self-confident because they know that they're going to get nowhere and it's not fun. They only pick on the weak. That's absolutely right, and um, that guy that's got into all sorts of trouble now, the lion man, um, I actually went along to his demo here in Christchurch, and he was fantastic to listen to, and he said that lions in the wild, they just sit down and watch the wildebeest go by and yeah. they can sense the weak ones and then they go after them. Yeah, it's shopping. So, <laughs> you know, th that's survival for them. That's but, right. you know, with human bullies, it's just um, it's just sort of tapping into a sort of a need to be sadistic and horrible, which is also a trait that humans have, unfortunately, and some of them have got it more than others. But... Um, Moving on to the actual education side of all this, 
I did watch Erica Stanford, and I thought she spoke actually very well. Mm. She pointed out that 80% of Maori students were not up to curriculum by intermediate level. Now, in my language, that means they were a failure. But, you know, you're not supposed to say that these days. No, everyone um, gets an award and she wanted <laughs> Everyone gets one. She wanted to address that issue first. Um, and I say full marks to her because that is what has to be addressed. And she said that... Um, she doubted whether they'd get enough Maori students at Auckland University to to actually sit on the chairs in that safe space it, because, <laughs> it, you know, the situation was so dire. Mm. Um, and I think she's got a really good point. Now, a little test for you, if you're up for it. Yeah. Because this is one of, this is one of my favourites. Um, a recent survey questionnaire of maths teachers drew drew a perplexing result. One question asked, if you had seven flies, which they had drawn on the paper, so it was, if you had seven flies, Cam, yep. how many flies would you need to total ten flies? So, so let me Can get this straight. That? We've got seven flies. If you had... We've already got seven yep. flies and we need to get to ten flies, right? Yes, yes. So how many more do you need? Oh, hang on, I'll just count my fingers. One. Two, you can count your fingers. Three. I think you'll be need, right. I think we need three flies. Yeah, yeah. And you're sure on that one? It's a really hard question. Mm, yeah, I'm sure. Three. You're sure? Yeah. Well, many teachers could not answer this question, and when they were asked about it later on, they said that they were too scared to try because they might be wrong. It what? might have been a trick. How can that be a trick? This is true. This is true. This is true. And um, I heard that it was probably early last year. I was absolutely fascinated with it. I've tried it on so many people, and you are only the second person that's actually given the, the right answer. Well, you'd have to be an absolute dolt to not get that correct. <laughs> and if a teacher can't get that, that correct because they think they might fail, then yeah. uh, then they really shouldn't be teaching. They shouldn't be uh, teaching but, our kids. They shouldn't have a, a failure mentality with our kids. You know, they, they we should be teaching our kids that they're the best that they can be, that they, that no one yeah. can take that away from them. They are the absolute best at what they are. And, and if you empower people, they become powerful. If you belittle people and... and um, and you know, treat them like a lot of teachers treat uh, kids, which is what I was talking to Elwyn Paul about. Uh, then they'll they'll it will become a self fulfilling prof prophecy. And sadly, what Erica Stanford is is trying to achieve won't be achieved for at least a generation. But in that time, we'll have had a couple of Labor governments again, and they would have been pandering to the to the weak unions and uh, and the teacher unions. Uh, where they don't actually respect the kids that they're teaching. That's absolutely right. And, you know, years ago I saw a very controversial thing on TV. It was shown really late at night because oh, it was so, um, you know, terrifying to watch. And it was called The Hot House People. Yep. And it was about this guy who um, educated kids and he took a class of absolute dumbos way down, um, you know, in their score, and he took them, I think it was in six weeks, he took them right up to well above average, it, just by getting them to sort of open up, stick their hands up and participate in the class, know that they weren't dumb, and that was really it in a nutshell, and um, he was so brilliant, and everyone went mad about this program, they said it was absolutely disgraceful, those kids would have no friends because they would be ahead of their time with their education, so they'd have no friends. And they interviewed one kid who, as a nine-year-old, had actually qualified for university with this system, and he said, well, actually, I've got more friends than all the others because I've got friends at university and, and friends in the playground. Mm, exactly. But, um, you know, that mentality of having people... Kept down low, um, 
victims and all the rest of it, I think it's an absolute disgrace, and that's what I think of um, your actual topic, and I think it's time that students and teachers learn to have the guts to stand up and to try and to face the world, not to hide in safe spaces. No, exactly. Anyway, I've got to take the next call now, uh, Lindley, so thanks very much for calling in, and we'll talk again next week. Okay, Ken. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Paul. Good to have you. Thank you for having me, Cam. How are you this day? I'm fantastic. I had a good weekend. I hope you had one too. Yes, back in the weekend, I um, I had a great time down at the beach with the family and it was just nice. Yeah, it was funny, eh, because the uh, weather forecast and the w- weather forecasters in the media were telling us it was going to be raining and freezing. Uh, but I was swimming and it was delightful. Well, I know Friday was a little bit inclement. I saw a front come through there, being an aviator. But um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday were beautiful days, and um, I was flying on two of them. Well, you never get disappointed flying on beautiful days like those days, that's for sure. No, the view was good. It was just absolutely lovely. And on a couple of them, there wasn't a cloud in the sky that I could see. So that's not bad for pretty good weather. Yeah, pretty good. Now, this week's topic... We've had a, a bit of a kerfuffle with Auckland University being busted having safe spaces for people of a particular race or, or where they come from. Uh, sometimes there's also women's spaces, but there's, the most of the fuss was about the safe spaces for Maori and Pacifica students. What are your thoughts on that? I um, seem to um, agree with some of the black movie stars when they say, why don't we call each other people rather than black people or white people? Why aren't we just people? Or why aren't we Kiwis rather than Maoris? Why aren't we New Zealanders rather than white or uh, colour? If we're just people, then if you stop mentioning colour, it stops being a problem. And uh, my thoughts are that safe spaces in place, who are they safe from? And why do they need to be safe from people who look like... um, I mean, there's not much aggression being shown, in my understanding. When I was at university, there wasn't much aggression being shown by one group of people to another. They were more trying to get on with the study that was required. Now I see that the teaching faculty have gone out of their way to let everybody know that you have to be a bit inclusive and a bit this and a bit that, which... I think that's fueling the, um, like, leave people to their own devices, and most people are reasonable and kind, and if they're not, evict them, expel them, whatever you need to do, and just have reasonable people there, rather than having all these safe spaces that are safe from whom. Well, I noticed they also said they've got Muslim prayer rooms. Now, I'm wondering if uh, perhaps a Jewish uh, student uh, asked for a prayer room how you would get on at the university or even in, indeed people like us who are Christian. If we said we wanted to have a prayer room at the university, I'm just wondering whether or not that would be um, provided for us or are we the wrong kind of people to give these spaces to? Yeah, I think um, we would be the wrong kind of people to give these spaces to, which is interesting in its own right because the only people you're allowed to openly mock are white males. But if you look at white males, they're the only net contributors to the taxation system. Mm. So if you get all the women, add them all up in total, they are net recipients. If you get all different races and add them up, now, just having said that, I have to exclude Asians and Jews because they're not really interested in the welfare system at all. But many other people are net recipients. Like mm. the Polynesians are net recipients. The Maoris are net recipients. So what they're saying is the only people you can mock is white males. Asians who work hard and have been bombed out of existence with nuclear bombs, but they've come back without a care in the world and just hard work and got there. And the main thing that I think is the cause of all the problems we have is absent fathers. And if we start addressing the real problem, which is absent fathers, then we will need a whole lot less safe places for people who are feeling somehow got at. I was talking earlier to to Alan Paul, and he was talking about poor be- behaviour at school. And I, I recounted, you know, your situation with your with your grandson, how he was treated as 
as the person who needed to be punished by the school, even though he was the victim of a bully. Yeah, he was treated as a perpetrator because he managed to fight back. And when someone was pushing and shoving and hitting him and he fought back, suddenly um, no fighting was their policy. So they wanted you to lay down and just take it. Well, of course, no one does that. Um, It's just not how it works. But also, the the reason we've got poor behaviour at school again goes to absent fathers one. But when you look at how many kids don't attend school, say if you've got a school of 300 Mm. and you've got, um, that's your role, or or, or 500, whatever, and they're saying more than 50% aren't attending. So the government's paying money for half the students to attend or less. Now, on an everyday basis, what are those idle hands doing? And hence, when they come to school, they've got behavioural issues. Now, I'm on the board of a school that's a, um, when they had a decile, it was a decile one school. I think we've got two or three Europeans there, the rest are Pacifica, Maori and Asian. Mm. And I'm on the board of that school. And we've got an attendance of 80%. And mm. I'm appalled at the 20% that don't go, meaning we've got, because we've got 350 kids odd, so we've got 70 kids away every day. And I'm mm. saying I'm saying it's terrible. We need to go and ring their parents, and, and our teachers ring every parent of every absent student. But we're like a country leader in attendance. And blow me down, 80% of the kids get qualified with university entrance and the like. And the main thing that they do differently to many other places is they come to school. And you're just thinking, who would have thought that that would be the strategy that would actually beat all? Well, I mean, that's the thing. And why I brought it up about bullying and uh, the way that schools treat it, it's kind of carried on into university with this creation of safe spaces. And Lindley, who was just on before you, um, said that she views these safe spaces as a form of bullying, that it's saying that these uh, people uh, need uh, are victims and therefore they need to be protected from everybody else. Um, but uh, the system actually creates a situation where a victimhood is, uh, is perpetrated on them and they become perpetual victims because everyone keeps telling them they need safe spaces and they need special access to universities and they need special this and special that. And, and all of a sudden you're starting to think that maybe these people are the special kids when in actual fact you've identified what it is, is that they just need to go to school and then they'll find university a whole lot easier. Well, well they do. And also what a condescending thing to say to people. Mm. You're so weak and dim water. We have to make a safe place for you away from others who may be unkind. Well, the School of Hard Knocks teaches you a lot. And if you learn to smile and laugh, the world smiles with you and you're having a great time. Mm. If you've got a frown and you're forever moaning and, and everything's wrong with everything, and it looks like many of our universities are breeding um, young people who are, are just objectionable because they are objecting to everything and then that sort of perpetuates them to being less than um, what you want the people to be filled with. And also, I mean, I don't know if you've watched any of this, Jay you know, interviewing university students and asking them questions, do you want a fourth grader, a sixth grader or an eighth grade question? And things like, when did World War Two finish? Getting stupid answers. Another one might have been, how long have, like, who was the first president, say? And they come up with names of people that you've heard recently that have been in power. And you look and you think, didn't you learn the story about they cutting down the apple tree and he didn't tell a lie and all that? You just look and you think, I really worry for our future because these people that go to university, in my view, don't seem sharp. Well, you know, I, I, I agree with you there. They don't seem sharp. But it also seems the Auckland University doesn't seem sharp. And I'm thinking that they really don't have a history department. Otherwise, they would know what the slippery slope is and where it ends. Exactly. And it doesn't end well. when you Many, got many secret... of these things, yes. We can ask the Jews how it went for them. We, yeah. we can ask a whole lot of people how it's gone for them when, when they've been special and then suddenly... Uh, it doesn't work. And, and and we seem to hide behind the things that we can't say. 
So we can't say that blacks owned a lot of slaves. The only people that are responsible for reparation are white people that have had slaves. We can't mm. say that the um, Turkish Empire had more slaves than America. Can't say that. You can't say that an Irish slave was worth less than the black slave, so they had to be in the hold of the ship where they were chucking bales down to them, because if you cross, crushed an Irishman, it was worth less than half of if you crushed, crushed a black slave. Now, these are the sorts of things that we don't hear, we can't say. And um, you just look and you think, well, in colonization in New Zealand, the average age of the colonized has doubled. Can't be that bad a thing. <laughs> That's right. It's like I'm always reminded every time Rawari Waititi or some other moaning person complains about colonization, I'm always reminded, you know, of 30 years ago, the life of Brian, when they're sitting there saying, Well, what have the Romans ever done for us? And then somebody pipes up and says, <laughs> well, well, there's the roads. Well, apart from the roads, what have the Romans ever done for us? And it goes on. And, it, it, you know, you could do the same for New Zealand. What have the English ever done for us? Well, well, there's laws, you know, there's roads, there's hospitals, <laughs> there's sanitation, there's, uh, you know, yep. floors, houses, <laughs> you know, all of these things. But, oh, no, colonisation was a terrible thing and, um, and, and should never have been visited upon anybody on earth. Well, they've, clearly, again, people aren't, you know, looking at history. They're only looking back to say, say the 1700s or the 1800s, and they forget that the Romans colonised um, most of Europe and a fair chunk of um, Asia Minor and the northern part of Africa and Egypt mm. all the way through. And before the Romans, it was uh, Alexander the Great who was colonising everybody. So, you know, colonisation has been around forever. It isn't a, isn't a modern thing that we need to be apologising for. I mean, no one says um, expects the Italians to apologise for the Roman invasion of Britain, do they? No, exactly. Or the Viking invasion of Britain. Yeah, so all, all these things seem to happen. So for my vote, safe places in a university for Pacifica and Maori is a huge condescending, you're not real people and you've got to be protected from the terrible people who... I haven't met too many of them. You know, the, the terrible people just seem like my neighbours. <laughs> exactly. All right, Paul, thank you very much for your call, and we'll talk again next week. Okay, take care. Bye for now. Thank you. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jack. Good to have you back. G'day, Cam. I hear you had a bit of a, a coffee oh, session yeah. on the weekend uh, at the beach. Yeah, I made a few, <laughs> as usual. Well, you do make pretty good coffees. I'm not a coffee drinker myself, but if I was going to get someone to make me a coffee, it'd be you. Oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway, the topic this week is Auckland University and their safe spaces for Maori and Pacifica and you know whatever else, women's spaces, rainbow spaces, um, special spaces, whatever. What do you think about this, Jack? What do you think, I should say? I was listening to our mealy-mouthed Wonder Boy Prime Minister on Hoskins this morning. Mm. You know, when he was asked the question, what do you think about it? Oh, well, um, no, I, I don't like it. Well, what are you going to do about it? Oh, well, I'm not going to do anything. And then Hoskins says, well, but hang on, doesn't Auckland University's funding come from the government? Oh, yes, but it wouldn't be appropriate for me to direct them. And I thought, ah, oh, we're doomed. We are really doomed. <laughs> it, it, it seems a rather simple solution, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I've joked, um, you know, for the past week, saying that I was going to wear a, a, you know, a hidden camera and try and go into the safe spaces for Maori and Pacifica and watch the outcry as they point out that you can't be in here, and then I'll have to point out to them that I was born in Fiji and then te therefore technically I'm Pacifica. So uh, let me in, and then yeah. the, then that we know where to hear what the real truth is. It's that I'm not brown enough. Yes, exactly. And and where that oh, goes is God. nowhere good. The logical conclusion of all of this uh, feather bedding of people and telling them that they're weak and pathetic, and they need safe spaces, and we need to protect them from imaginary things that they, that are besetting them in life, is that they become weak Any and pathetic. Part. And uh, and and uh, and cry about everything that comes across their their path that they think might be slightly upsetting them. Yeah, I guess you're right. This oh, country is going to the dogs. I know, I know, I know. 
it's, it's really like the education system and how poorly behaved they are. A simple solution is take the benefit off the parents. Be fixed overnight. But, of course, no one will do that. Oh, no, it'd be depriving people. You can't uh, deprive them of their entitlements. You'd hear all sorts of wailing and gnashing your teeth if you tried to do that. But, you know, that's exactly what Paul was saying just before you. Uh, he he was saying oh, really? that, um, that a lot of the problems in, start at school uh, with absenteeism and they don't learn how to uh, be contributing members of society by just bunking off school. And he puts that down to a lack of fathers in the homes. Now, I might be a little bit simplistic, yep. but I, I think he's probably right. And what fathers are in the homes, often they're drunk or drugged. Well, they're both. deadbeat dads. And there's plenty of deep, deadbeat yeah. mothers as well. And, you know, I, I don't know if the government can actually solve this problem because it's intergenerational. And so if you put in place right. a policy or something to try and address this, you have an election in three years' time, you get tipped out, and you get some bunch of wombles or woke people like the Greens who think, oh, all the people need is a hug. And um, that'll fix all the problems, and they undo all of the things that you were trying to solve with this intergenerational problem. Well, I was already already depressed when I came on your show, and you've made me even more depressed. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. Uh, I mean, well, the same problem is occurring in Australia. Yeah. I'm talking to uh, my niece's uh, husband, and who's over from Australia, and I said, "Oh, well, you know, is it the land of milk and honey?" And he said, "No." Nah. I said, "What's?" What's the biggest problem that you have over there? He said, well, everyone's talking about crime. It's just out of control. And the indigenous people are at the heart of it. And, of course, the police, just like here, arresting them. But I can't lock them up, take them home, and then doing the same thing the next day. If they actually get to court, the judges are useless. They let them out. Catch and release. Know. Catch and release with no consequences Catch leads and... to a... Every, every uh... one of the offenders here is known to the police by name. They know every one of them. Yep. I remember, you know, 30 years ago when my cousin was a cop down in Waioku, he knew if a, if there was a fridge stolen or a fridge or whiteware, then you go around to that person's house and that's where it'll be. If it was a bike or, yep. or something like that, a motorbike, where well, you go to that person's house and that's where it'll be. He knew them all by name. He knew exactly what they were. And, and he did old-fashioned police. He went around, knocked on the door, said, you, that, all that stuff that you nicked last night from Mrs. Smith, you need to take it back by the close of business today or else. But now that we've got the police driving around in rainbow cars yes, and, exactly. and, protect, and protecting rainbow crosswalks, you know, they don't want to go and catch yeah, actual well, don't, criminals. Don't, don't, blame the, yeah, don't blame the bodies on the beat for that. That's come from head office, and we all know who that is. That was the guy that our current Minister of Police was going to deal to. I see that's not happened. No, not yet. But um, things work slowly with the police. Uh, if they work even slower with the politicians. And I think that's where the problem lies. We we expect our government to fix everything, to give us guidance on everything. You know, and Ronald Reagan clearly, you know, he was a, a smart man and he said the nine most dreaded words in the English language is, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Must be anyway, frustrating Jack, for Winston. Yeah, it must be frustrating for Winston. He probably um, he probably taught Noah on the ark a few things. I reckon. Anyway, Jack, I better take the next call. So thank you very much for calling in to Cam's Buddies, and we'll talk again next week. See you, Cam. Bye. See you, bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jimmy. Good to have you back. Thanks, Cam. How are you this week, man? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, really good. Had a fantastic Easter. I uh, hope you did too. And, um, yeah, good to be back into the show. Get stuck into it. Now, what are you talking about this week? Okay, so you might have seen last week there was a bit of a fuss and bother about Auckland University having safe spaces for Maori and Pacifica, and I'm just interested in what you think about that. I think it's a disgrace to have rooms assigned by the colour of people's skin. That's a disgrace, and it should be instantly banned. And the government which funds the university should instantly look at their funding methods for the, you know, how they instigate policies into the university. It's insane. Segregation's back and it's brought to you by the woke left. I think it's a disgrace. I couldn't believe it, actually. That's about, you know, I just, I can't believe how much this country shifted left in the last six years. It's absolutely nuts. So, yeah, that's what I'd, my take on it. I know very people are pretty shocked about it. 
very crazy. But you know, the university seems unrepentant, and they're talking about they've got you know, prayer spaces for Muslims. They don't mention prayer spaces for Christians or Jews or or Hindus or um, you know um, anybody else or any other type of religion out there. Just Muslims. Um, they've got safe spaces for rainbow. Um, which would be very interesting to see what that looks like, and um, and safe spaces for women. It seems like there's more safe spaces than there are lecture theatres. The universities are crazy. I mean, they're hiring open communist lecturers and these people are lecturing at young future business people. It just seems utterly mad how far they've gone. But in saying that, I'm not anti-safe um, spaces for women or, you know, particularly maybe places based on um, religion or something, but based on race is just a, in a multicultural society is only going to lead to problems, you know, because... Yeah. Any safe space we're going to need in the end. So, you know, a, ra- a rainbow space, to, to me, that's okay. I, I'm not really anti that. I'm, I'm not particularly pro it, but I'm just not as anti. But just based on race is insane to me. I'm just appalled by that. In general, I, I went to Auckland University, and I'm quite ashamed. They send me, mo- send me an email every few months asking for money, and I'm going to respond to the next one with a big FO. <laughs> but I see um, on Tuesday that the go- government announced another... 100-day plan from here, setting targets, all good stuff. What's wrong yep. with running the country like this? Well, I don't have After a problem with running... Policy. I don't have a problem with running a country uh, like a business at all. It's only the, the Fruit Loops like, you know, Chloe Swarbrook and the Greens who are quick to criticise but never offer any solutions themselves. Well, all that Luxo's doing is measuring results. That, what's wrong with measuring results? That's, that's effectively all he's doing is instigating policy they believe in and then measuring the results and proving that it's either failing or it's succeeding. Mm. Whereas the Arden regime just got rid of all measurements so they could hide their failings. Yeah. So bringing back a government that measures its KPIs or performance, what's wrong with that? It's it's absolutely insane there's people against it. They should be wanting the government's held to account. Either side. Just they hate the policy. They hate the result. They hate the success. They just want us to be equal losers. Yeah, that's what. Oh, they that's want. the thing, isn't it? They do we want us to talk be... them out of it, so we just have to keep fighting. Margaret Thatcher said, "Rust, the rust never sleeps. The rust of communism, man." No, it doesn't. That and socialism, it never sleeps. They're always coming up for some other way to divide society up, and all of the safe spaces for rainbow and and trans and um, everybody <laughs> else, including you know people of different colours, is all about. Uh, dividing us so we're all fighting each other so that they can continue their long march through the institutions. Well, as depressing as this is, they've been bloody successful. You know, like you think of all the Wellington institutions that we used to trust. I don't, yeah. no one trusts any of them anymore. I don't trust the justice system. I don't trust the police anymore. You know, like vandalize a rainbow crossing, it's a hate crime. Vandalize our national document in a secure building. It's a legitimate protest. That's insane. Yeah, it's not say. Yeah, so they have really well marched through our institutions, and I just don't know how you clean it out. And people keep saying this government will do it after a couple of terms, but they've got to really. No, they've got to do it now and cement it in place so that it can't be overturned. If they wait um, for two terms, then it's only been in place one term, and people will be expecting the the morons and the Labour Party to. you know, to, to overturn it so that they can have their their little womble groups um, carrying on wombling and uh, we all get to pay for it. Well, that's the problem. I mean, Wellington, well, this is a bit of a slide trap, but Wellington voted 37% Green Party. Mm. And when you add in the Labour Party, it was like 60-something percent. Yep. These are the people that man these institutions. We need to restart them, shift them. We've talked about this before. Unless you get rid of the culture and the self-belief of these people, you can't change the institution no. to a more measurable scientific one with results-based. They just so believe in their own phalanx, you know. I, I don't know how you fix that. Well, I was say, saying to Jack, to Jack and yeah. to Paul, this is an intergenerational problem that we've got. It starts at schools, and we need to um, actually change the way schools are. But the trouble is, is because yeah. it's intergenerational, you know, you can put in some policies, um, but but the teachers aren't going to implement them properly, and they'll just wait until they get um, you know a union friendly government uh, come back in, 
and uh, and then all of those things that you're doing to try and improve outcomes uh, disappear. You yeah. only have to look at what Bill English was trying to do with welfare reform, and uh, all of that got undone when he lost the election when he failed to negotiate. Yeah, well, that's I don't know how you fix that because you can't obviously fire the entire government staff on day one because you've got to function. You've got to slowly have a way to sort of go through the institutions and fire, rehire, and reculture them. You know, so even changes of governments that will say it's more politically neutral, you know, and not. Yeah. So communist, I guess. Yeah. So anyway, that's my thoughts. Mate. That was terrible. Auckland University is a disgrace. Yeah, no, a total disgrace. Yeah. All right, Jimmy, thanks for your okay, comments, cool, and uh, we'll thanks. talk again next week. Okay, thank you. Thanks, mate. Bye. I don't think I've got any woke friends at all. It seems university don't have anyone with a real grasp on reality. Perhaps I could hire out my buddies to give advice to corporates and government organisations. Tell us your thoughts on Cam's buddies by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you. So connect with us today.